Welcome to another episode of the Chokesland Wrestling Report. I am your host, the infamous Ultimate One from New York City. And a happy new year to all my subscribers on my YouTube channel. Today, I will be talking about the Wrestle Kingdom. A lot of people started off the year already with watching negative wrestling. Yes, and when I'm talking about negative wrestling, I speak about no other than the WWE. And, um... If you guys watch Raw this uh, past Monday, I don't know why you guys pretty much um, torture yourself. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about one event that happened on Monday and Tuesday. They already in this event has four, not one, not two, four match of the year candidates. And I'm talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 15. It was a two-night event. And, oh, my God. I cannot talk no more highly about it that I've been talking about on Twitter and other places. And let me tell you, um, this was an event that I don't see any, any promotion in wrestling today that will be able to top it at all. Now, mind you, I'm sorry if you guys... Uh, right now looking at me and saying why you keep looking down I'm trying to get my notes from the Wrestle Kingdom um, event and why not and I'm trying to make sure that um, I'm set up here um, so if you guys saw Wrestle Kingdom 15 if any of y'all got went to New Japan or Fight TV and saw this event on Monday and Tuesday you will see what professional wrestling is all about. And New Japan Pro Wrestling did not disappoint. Now, mind you, that during this weekend, they were talking about there was a possibility that fans won't be able to be in the Tokyo Dome because Japan was about to put a state of emergency for the pandemic. And they weren't sure they were able to bring in fans or not. Even though New Japan was still going to go with the event, whether fans or no fans, they were still going to do it. And let me tell you, for what I saw in the last 48 hours of pro wrestling, this is one of the reasons why I love New Japan Pro Wrestling. And New Japan Pro Wrestling is my number one promotion that I like. Then comes AEW, then MLW. Then, you know, maybe Impact and maybe, you know, Ring of Honor. And now you're probably saying, but what about WWE? Listen, I'm not wasting my time, my, uh, my precious hours to watch what I've been watching for almost a year. I'm not, it's not going to happen. So, um, but let's go over night one of Wrestle Kingdom. And the first match of the night was the uh, the Rumble they had. Uh, the, Ram the Rumble was pretty much a... Uh, um, it's like a battle royal. It's, it's a battle royal. You either get pinned or thrown over the ropes. And the competitors was uh, Ishii, Chase Owens, Minoru Suzuki, Yuhiro Nagata, Toa Hinari, Hiroshi Goto, Yohiro Takahashi, Yoshihashi, Toga, Togi Makabe, uh, Tormana Homa, Tenzan, Rocky Morero, Duki, Sho, Bushi, Tiger Mask, Badlak Fale from Bullet Club, Gabriel Kidd, a young lion, Julia Amora from Young Lion, Yoda Suji, another Young Lion, and Toriano. Now, again, this was like a battle royal. The winner of this gets to go to a four-way match night two and wrestle each other on a four-way to win the King of Pro Wrestling uh, trophy for the year. You get to defend that trophy during the year, okay? And so this was something that... It was new this year because the years past they done the the rumble and whoever wins wins no big deal but this time it was more of whoever wins gets to wrestle each other night two and they get to walk around for the whole year with the king of pro wrestling trophy. Yano was the winner last year in a four way tournament that um, uh, Okada came up with this idea because you know they usually have the 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 pay-per-view called Kano Pro Wrestling on October but last year they weren't able to do it because of what's going on in the world the pandemic and all that stuff so now here we have the Rumble 
Uh, and the way I read you, the 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 guys that came in, it was Chase Over was number one, and he ended up staying as one of the four members. And then um, the other guy who stood behind was Bushi from Inagobanables. Then you have Bad Luck Fale. He also was part of that. He won it. And Yano was the last competitor to come in to the ring. But by the time he got there, already Bushi, Chase Owens, and Bad Luck Fale were already in the ring. So there was three. He was the fourth one. He didn't even get to wrestle. He didn't even take off his stuff. So he ended up winning that four-way rumble. Or the, uh, the I mean, you saw... I like the fact that they left the young lions and going there. They they triple team Bad Luck Fale. They were trying to throw him over the ropes. They did not successful successfully did that. Uh, it was nice seeing Tiger Mask. He's been away. He had a, some um, some issue health wise. Um, talking Makabe, I haven't seen him in a long time. He was in there. Tomani Homa. He was another guy who was in there. So it was something different. Um, the good thing about it, the beginning of the event, because that was the pre-show. The beginning of the event, New Japan acknowledged Brody Lee and dedicated the event to him, which it was very nice of them to do. Um, the first match of the night was Ed Fantasmo versus Hiromo Tadahashi. Now, the reason this match was set up was because Tadahashi, after he won the best of the Super Juniors, requested that he went he meet the winner of the J Cup winner. It happened about the next day after the finals of the World Tag League and the Best of Super Juniors. So he wanted the winner of that. And the winner of that was Ed Fantasmo, who won it for the second year in a row. Of course, he disrespected the trophy, broke the trophy behind ACH back in the tournament. And then he dragged the yellow jacket that is very prestige, something that uh, Jushin Liger has, you know, honored for years. He was dragging that jacket. I mean, even in the in the in the Wrestle Kingdom, he walked around with the jacket. He was kicking the jacket all over the place. So it was just a disgrace how he just, you know, um, was just kicking the jacket around like it was worth nothing. Uh, the winner of this match will meet up with Bone Soldier, Ishi, uh, Ishimori, Taiji Ishimori, the IWGP Junior Champion on night two. So. Um, if Atasmo hit a beautiful moonsault from the road after walking on top of the road to deliver a move on uh, Tanahashi, if uh, Atasmo always mocking or using other wrestlers' move. He during the match, I mean, he started working on uh, Tanahashi's hand because Tanahashi hurt his hand. He stomped on his hand, and it looked like he had something in his boots. Uh, he was complaining that if Atasmo had something in his boots that was kind of heavy, that was. You know, he like he had a foreign object, so he was using that boot, that boot to hurt Tanahashi's hand. Um, and again, if Atasmo ended up, you know, dominating most of the match, he hit a super hero Karana, then a frog splat, and then a style class, and he couldn't pin Hiromo with all those moves he made. Hiromo hits a DVT after uh, Fantasmo attempted to do a one wing angel. This guy was using everybody's, you know, like. It was like a, 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 a homage to Bullet Club leaders past. That's what he was doing. So, and he, uh, Hiromo wins after he reversed a cradle uh, on Enfatasmo for the win. So he ends up beating Enfatasmo because Enfatasmo was playing around, book, you know, like not taking it serious. Now, Enfatasmo, he's back in, in Japan. I see him with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. Somewhere down the line, in uh, months to come, he's, he's not one guy to sleep in. I still think he is the Red Probe Cruiserweight Champion. I don't know if he still is, but um, most likely, you know, he may not, but who knows. Uh, but Fatal is one guy you can't sleep on. The next match was the Gorillas of Destiny versus Dangerous Tekker, Tai Chi, and Zack Sabre Jr. for the IWGP Tag Team Champion. Dangerous Tekker started the match aggressively as they were accompanied by Dookie. They were using all kinds of dirty tactics uh, on the Gorillas of Destiny. The Gorillas of Destiny ended up doing the Tonka Twist uh, by Tama while Ghetto beat Dookie with a candlestick outside the ring. G.O.D. took control of the match. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. comes in and he starts using quickness and submission moves on Tama and, and controlled most of the match. Tonga Loa sneaked behind uh, the de uh, Dangerous Tech clothesline line both members. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. kept asking Loa to hit him. Loa and Tama called Saxon Jr. for a powerbomb. They did. 
they did uh, what the um, Ming and Barbarian, the uh, what was the name in WCW? They did a move where uh, they pick up, they they it's like a body slam. He tried to body slam the opponent, but then uh, the next uh, his partner grabs him and power bobs him. So they say they took it back to the old school. Uh, the Faces of Fear, that was the name of the tag team. Um, it was Haku and Barbarian. So they took it back to that, those days by making that move. They went for a super power bomb, and then Sark Super Jet caught Law in the front face, choke hole in the corner. Then Taishi sacrificed his partner, Sack Saber Jr., when he grabbed Sack Saber Jr., and kind of like it was like a power bomb suplex, but he had Tanga Law on, on the face, and like I said, in the choke hole, like he was about to uh, super, super suplex them. Both teams giving it all in a great match. PK on Loa. Tama hits the gun stun on Sack Saber Jr. Saito suplex on, um, by Taishi on Tonga. Oh, actually, Loa it was it. Tonga hit Taishi with the iron glove that Taichi in the past has never used it. I haven't seen them used it ever since. Uh, I forgot the name of the wrestler who used to carry it and gave it, passed that along with him. But this was the second time that the Gorilla's Destiny pretty much. Um, uh, pretty much, they uh, used for the second time. They used it in the World Tag League to beat the champs, and now they used it again, and they end up uh, winning it when um, Loa hit a, a sit-down power drive on Tai Chi for the win. The Gorillas of Destiny ends up winning the IWGP World Tag Team titles for the seventh time to complete their mission. They were the World Tag League uh, winners, and now they end up winning that. After that, they had the Moxley appears on the Wrestle Kingdom. Looks like he uh, recorded that in in the LA dojo, um, and he c- claimed that the Pale Horse was coming back to New Japan. And for the winner of of the night's U.S. IWGP certification match, he they were going to face him. So that match was Kojima versus Kenta, and the U.S. title Brike Tezza coming to Kojima, but. And Tenza got too close to the action. He got DDT outside by Kenta when he tried to assist Kojima. Kenta dominated Kojima for most of the match. Kojima DDT Kenta in the edge of the apron at one point. Uh, Kenta with a corner drop kick mocking Shibata move. And Kenta with a top rope stomp on Kojima. Power slam by Kenta. Kenta wanted to use the break palm, but the referee stopped him. He palm strikes, rocks Kojima, and he hit the go to sleep on Kojima to win the match. Uh, this match, you knew Kojima was going to lose, but uh, Kojima showed that he still has it at a very old age. He's about, I think he's about 40, 45. Not, actually, he's probably older than that, 45 or 50. But he still looks in great shape. Um, he gave Kenta run his, for his money, but Kenta dominated most of the match, and he put him to sleep. He wins the match. The next match was the Great Okan versus Tanahashi. Uh, and this match, Great Okan was dominating Tanahashi throughout the match. He kept working on Tanahashi's leg. Okan tried to suplex Tanahashi outside the ring, but he skinned the cat. And he sling blade o- Okan. Okan catches Tanahashi on top of the road with a claw on his face and a cobra twist. Suplex face first on Tanahashi. Tanahashi hits a dragon suplex and a frost slap for the win. So, most of the match, you saw... That Tanahashi was the underdog in this match. And he was trying to survive because his knee has been damaged throughout the World Tag League. And a lot of people attacked his knee. And Great Okan attacked it at the end of the road to Tokyo Dome. Tanahashi got even when he started beating him up with the with the chair. And that's what Great Okan was focusing on. The only thing I don't like is that if you brought Great Okan into New Japan to be this dominant figure... He should not be losing to Tanahashi. Tanahashi should have lost this match because Tanahashi is already a guy. He's not even going to be in the world title pitcher. They're not going to give him another title shot. So why is he even bother? You know what I'm saying? So I, I really didn't even understand that one. But Great Okan looks good. I mean, he's still young, you know. Um, so he's going to have his losses and his wins, but we'll see. Okada versus Osprey. Now, this match was a match of the year candidate. And the reason I say it because the match went almost 35, 35, 40 minutes. Uh, and I took a couple of notes. Okada taking control of Osprey outside the ring. Uh, Bia uh, Prisley uh, distracted Okada and gets caught with a kick coming into the ring by Osprey. 
Osprey with a neck breaker outside. Osprey was working on Okada's neck, knowing that ne- Okada has had issues with his neck. Osprey in control. Okada took control of the match high with high backdrops. I mean, he nearly threw uh, Osprey almost 15 to 20 feet high. That's how high he was throwing him. He did it a couple of times. They were exchanging blows. Big drop came on Osprey while he sat on top of the buckle to the outside. Kicking the face to Okada by Osprey. Okada. Uh, shotgun drop kick on Osprey outside. Top row lunge drop kick on Os- Osprey again. Super kick and reverse bloody Sunday by Osprey on Okada. Uh, two O's kicks by uh, Osprey. Often by both onto Osprey. Hit a sit down power bond and Okada, uh, you know, kicked out at two. Okada gets super luck on the table outside. That was bad because Osprey took and just. Just suplex um, Okada on this on this table. The table broke, and the tables in Japan are not like the tables here in the United States. They're hard, made out of hard oak, and you can see Okada had a laceration on his shoulder blade. So it was bad. It was it was real bad. Uh, Osprey rolled Okada back in the ring, hits a forearm and a violent power bomb for a two count. Okada tombstone Osprey on the edge of the ring, rainmakers and a drop kick. Money clip on Osprey and twisting power driver and money clip again. B. Priestley was taken out after she stepped into the edge of the ring and Okada pushed Osprey toward B. Priestley and they both collided. Uh, Okada with a kick in a forearm. Osprey kicks Okada with a sitting top of the rope. Uh, it was like I said, uh, he, yeah, well, he was sitting on top of the rope. A Spanish fly for a two count. I mean, there's nobody who does that Spanish fly better than Will Osprey. So it was for two count. Os Carter for another two count. Slaps Okada. He pushes a referee. Hit Okada on the back of the neck. He drop kicks Okada. Then Ray making money clip again by Okada. Tom Tombstone by Osprey taking a page out of Okada. And then um, he used the rim maker on Okada. It didn't work because he got out he got out of two count. Sit down Tombstone and a rim maker. By Okada to beat Osprey. This match was crazy. If you guys have not seen this match, I will advise you to go see it because this was match of the year candidate. And that's 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 the way I see it. It was match of the year candidate. The next match was the double title match, which was the IWGP and the Intercontinental Belts held by Naida, who was the champion against Ibushi. They both started out a feel out process between the two. Face front suplex on Ibushi on the outside by Naido. Of course, these two guys, when they get together, they just take it to the next level. And, and, and Ibushi takes so much punishment. It's out of control. Naido took control of the match working on the neck. Naido drops a neck breaker on the outside on the ring apron bar where Ibushi, it, it was just nasty. He, 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 grabs, he grabs Ibushi, drags him to the edge of the ring, and then he drops him outside the ring and his neck hit the bottom part bar where the bar is at on the ring, and he hits his neck there. Ibushi, I don't know how Ibushi got out from that. It, it was just it, it was just crazy. Ibushi back suplex and then stomps Naido. Ibushi gets caught in a chokehold after he attempts a moonsault and a soul of elbows on Ibushi by Naido, and he hits Gloria for a two count. Ibushi, Ibushi gets back on the edge of the ring again. This was the second time. I don't know how many times he got hit with the edge. Only for Naida to get um, to get uh, Huru Karana on the outside of the ring. Um, this this was crazy because the way uh, Ibushi caught Naido with this Huru Karana. Naido flew at least almost five feet in the air and landed almost uh, landed his leg on the railing outside. Um, it, it it was just it was just crazy. It was very crazy. Um, then after that, Ibushi get hit with a poison. Who go around from the top rope uh, because um, they both were fighting for position in the top rope. Naido goes and does the poison hurricanrana. That means like a, a backwards hurricanrana. Dropped him on his head. Um, Ibushi gets hit with a Destino. He gets out of it at a two count. Naido uh, gets hit with a sit down crater power bomb. He gets out of a two count. Both of them will still go at it. Go McGee by Ibushi for a two count. Second Destino from Naido for a two count. Gomez, second one for the two count. Valencia by Naido hit. And the third Gomez from Ibushi 
was the one that wins him the IWGP World Title and the, the Intercontinental Belt. And then after that, after the match was over, um, Jay White came out and you know he was the next challenger for the next night. So that was night one, and that alone was just one of them. Uh, I believe one of the uh, match of the year candidate. Okada versus Osprey. It must must see. A must see match. The second night was night two. It was the King of Pro Wrestling Final Four. Again, like I said in the beginning of the show, Bushi, Fale, Yano, and Owens. These guys went at it. Yano was, you know, Yano and Bushi were pretty much uh being taken out. It looked like Owens and Fale had a, a plan and which where it looked at one point. That Fale went and did the finger of doom on Owens so he could get the pin. Ibushi and Yano came in to break up that pin. Um, and it was not much of the match. It was more comedic, whatever. But uh, toward the end, uh, you could see Fale and Chosen were not on the same page when they did the grenade launcher on, I believe, was on Ibushi. And Chase Owens was about to get, uh, I think he did like a, yeah, when he did the grenade launch, it was like a back suplex, and he was doing a bridge, and Fale kicked the legs of, uh, of Chase Owens and tried to cover it. And Owens was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And that ended up a dispute between them two. The referees getting, like, telling them, look, guys, you need to stop arguing what you're going to do. They both grabbed the referee, and that opened for Yano to go and hit a low blow on both of them, and he ends up winning again. The king of pro wrestling trophy for 2021 so he's this is the second time he has held that which is pretty good it's something for him to enjoy because yano is a more comedic wrestler but i like i love yano yano is a is a great don't be so god yano could wrestle let me tell you that he might do a comedic he might be a gimmick guy but he could wrestle the next match was the iwgp junior tag team title match between desperado and kind versus taguchi and master Wado. This match, you knew that Kanemaru is probably going to win this fight. Uh, Desperado Kanemaru working on Taguchi's leg during the match. Uh, Kanemaru used the referee three times to stop Master Waddle's momentum. I don't know how the referee did not disqualify him on that. So, my, Master Waddle, I still got to get used to him because, first of all, you're being you're using that thing, Master Waddle. And to me, that's more of. You know, um, like you have mastered everything. And you're a young guy. So that's a name a lot of um, New Japan wrestlers did not like when he came in with that name. So that's, I mean, New Japan is, has a different culture. So they're not going to put up with that. So anyway, so he used the referee team uh, three times. A reverse power slam on Desperado land on his head by uh, Taguchi, who did that. Desperado put the numero dos on du- Taguchi. It looked like... Th- Taguchi was going to give up. Taguchi turns it around and puts an ankle lock on Desperado. Desperado hit a close fist on Taguchi. I'm talking about he rocked him. He rocked him, and then he hit his finishing move, the pinche loco, to win and retain the IWGP Junior Tag Team Championships. Uh, I don't see any team in there that could beat Desperado at kind of morrow. And they held those belts for almost a year. I mean, the year before they had them for almost a year. I don't see no tag, junior tag team out there to beat them. Jeff Cobb versus Shingo Takaji. This match, the second match that I said was match of the year candidate. Um, and this match was hard hitting. Uh, and Jeff Cobb in the beginning was belly to belly suplex on Shingo outside that he flew over seven feet in the air. I mean, he caught Shingo and he just flipped them over his head. Shingo, I don't know how Shingo didn't land on the other side of the glass or the railing. That's how hard he hit him with that. Uh, then Jeff dominated matches with power. He was working on Shingo's back. Saito suplex on Jeff by Shingo. Shingo hit a flying body roll on Jeff. DDT and a dragon over for a two count. Um, spin cycle by Jeff on Shingo. Two uh, two gut wrenching uh, power slam by Cobb. Black Tiger Bomb by Cobb on Shingo for a two count. A Death Valley Driver by Shingo out of nowhere. Suplex by Shingo. Then the wheelbarrow suplex by Shingo. So Shingo was already team control this match. Both wrestlers started then exchanging suplex. Cobb threw Takaji over his head. Don't know how he didn't break his leg because the way he grabbed him and he threw him over his head, but the way Takaji landed, you can see that his ankle kind of twisted. I, I don't know how he didn't break his leg. 
I, it was it was just some crazy stuff. Takachi hit, hits the last dragon to beat Jeff Cobbs after a grueling battle of retaining the the never open world title. Um, and this was a crazy match. Again, I say match of the year candidate because these guys went for another 20, 30 minutes and they hit each other with everything. And I'm gonna give it to Takaji. Takaji's a once tough son of a bitch because Jeff Cobb hit him with everything. And it was a good match. I gotta give it to Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb brought it and that was cool. The next match was Ewo versus Sonata. This match was a grueling battle. A grueling battle and uh Ewo was trying to lure Sonata to the outside, but of course because Togo was out there, um Paradise Lock on Evil, which it was, you know, the same thing Sonata does most of the time. Time Timekeeper Abe, Abe, who is the one, uh, one of the Japanese, who always is the one who rings the bell. He got hit with the um, with the railing after Evil threw Sonata to the to the railing, um, and then Evil snaps Sonata to the railing, and Evil hits Sonata with a chair. Sonata that one, that's when he puts the chair around his neck, and then he just grabs the other one, and just hit him around. Uh, and it's different. It's different in Japan because the, usually, if it would have been here in America, the referee would disqualify you for using the chair. In Japan, they give you leniency a little bit, you know. So it was cool. Um, so now threw a thrown to the exposed steel corner. Uh, the pads were taken out by Togo, like he always does. Togo hits Sonata with a chair. Then Togo taken out by Sonata for sticking his nose where he didn't belong. Togo interfered again, but then um. Um, Sonata caught uh, Evil with the magic screw. But when he caught, catches him, um, he picks him up, looks like he's going to do a suplex, but hangs him by the top rope, and then he just does a twist of his neck. Uh, double wing suplex by Sonata for a two count. Evil pushes Sonata to the exposed steel again. Um, suplex by Evil on Sonata. Um, Evil hit an exposed corner. Um, once he went, I think he, he tried to... So I, I think he tried to clothesline um, Sonata and he missed. TKO hit on Evil. Referee hit Togi. Referee hit Togi comes in with a chair, uh, and it was Evil again uh, doing his thing. He pushed the referee. So again, uh, Togo comes in with a chair. And then Togo and Evil hit the Magic Killer. Evil was pushed to the ropes. Togo falls on the top rope when he was trying to do something in the top rope, and he got he got caught by by. Uh, when um, Sonata pushed Evil over the ropes. Uh, Sonata attempted a moonsault, but he got all the knees of Evil. Togo put, a, uh, Togo put through a table after interference again. Great match. Uh, Sonata used Evil finishing move. Hits a pop-up take KO and a moonsault beats Evil. And now the question is, where does Evil stand? Because now Evil, who is the former IWGP and Intercontinental Champion, double champion in the beginning of this summer... Is now in the uh, he's floating around waiting for what's gonna happen next. I'm still waiting for see what's gonna happen with Bullet Club. Uh, that's something I'm really looking forward to because there was a little beef between him and Jay White. The IWGP Junior World Tag Team Title, I mean uh, not tag team. I'm sorry, IWGP Junior World Title was Hiromi Takahashi versus Taishi Ishimori. This match started off with Ishi, Ishimori power bombing on the edge of the ring on Hiromo. Ishiromi drops uh, uh, Ishi Hiromo on the side suplex and hits hit, hits his head on the ramp, which that was outside. And that was because Hiromo decided to take Bone Soldier outside on the rampway when they come in. And then he went all the way to the beginning of the ramp, saw they coming straight down, and Bone Soldier was just waiting for him there. And he just caught him sideways and hit a suplex on the outside, and he hits his head on the ramp. A dive on her own by Bone Soldier. Started to work on his back. Uh, shoulder first unexposed steel on Hiromo. Hiroshimori pulls Tadahashi's arm backwards. Hiromo with a Herakurana trying to come back uh, to slow down the pace. Wheelbarrow on Ishimori outside the ring. This was crazy. Hiromo working outside on Bone Soldier. But Ishimori caught Hiromo's arm. And when they were inside the ring, and he did a frog splash on his whole arm. I mean, it was like, oh my god, uh, it was just, it was just bad. It, it was just real bad. Um, and then he, he uh, he caught, he catches Hiromo with a Canadian destroyer. Ishimori and and Hiromo then start doing back and forth often on both of us on themselves. 
the yes lock was after him almost taking a form shot from Ishimori. I mean, Ishimori hit. Uh, Hiroma like about 30 or 40 times for him. He kept coming up until he caught him with the yes lock. And, he, you know, he didn't still didn't give up. Hir Hiromo hit Ishimori on the exposed steel with the cannonball bow move that he usually does. Hiromo hits the time bomb to beat his, uh, Ishimori and become the three times IWGP junior champion. So, there you go, guys. Then we had the main event, which is a double world title. This was very interesting because Jay White and when he in the ring, he's talking trash. And Cody Butcher, the Jay White takes control of the match as soon because of Ghetto. Ghetto again, getting involved. Uh, he takes an elbow after getting involved again uh, by Ibushi because he kept sticking his nose in it. High angle suplex on the edge by the ring by Jay on Ibushi, using the edge of the ring to slam Ibushi's rib, working on the ribs during the match. A clinic done by Jay White while working on the ribs and a DDT on, on Ibushi, uh, a kick right on the chest on Jay by Ibushi, kicking the mix session. Standing moonsault by Ibushi for a two count. Power slam by Ibushi on Jay, but gets caught when he tries to get a move off the ropes. A dragon leg sweep on Ibushi. I mean, it was bad. He did like a, a, a corkscrew type thing. Blade Buster for a two count. Jay White drops Ibushi on the top rope like he was bad laundry. I mean, it was bad. It was, he was already working on his abdomen area, his ribs. He kept working on that. Dragon suplex on Jay at one point on Ibushi. Slug fifth by both of them. They kept hitting each other. The bastard driver lands on Jay White. Back suplex by Jay White. Uh, uh, Uroganagi by Jay for a two count. Kiwi Crusher for a two count. Ibushi, but Ibushi can't come in out. Suplex by Ibushi. Bombayé on Jay White for a two count. That was the first Bombayé he hit. Referee catches Jay with his foot on the ropes when he tried to pin him. The same way he beat Ibushi for the certificate back in September by putting the rope, his legs on the ropes, and the referee caught him. So then after that, that's like kind of woke up, um, um, Ibushi, and he kicked he kicked Jay in the head like a couple of times. He kept asking Jay to get up. Another kick in the head. Ghetto interferes again. He gets hit. Jay working on Ibushi's leg. And then he locked the ITO on Ibushi. Ibushi escaped. Ibushi kicking Jay's ass all over the ring after that because he, it's like he just woke him up. And Jay was hitting him with the forearm. But Ibushi was hitting him. I'm talking about he was hitting him with shots. It was ridiculous. Um, let's see. Uh, Jay asked Ibushi to pin him. Ibushi was like looking at him like he was crazy. And Ibushi started an assault on Jay. He pushed the referee by mistake, and then Jay hit Ibushi with a low blow. Now I'm thinking like, okay, here goes. Jay's going to win the belt because he just hit a low blow. Um, Jay started to mock him. Actually, Jay assaulting Ibushi outside in the railing again in the rim post. Started working on his back. He was talking trash while hitting him. Ribs, everything. Um, then... Um, then he went inside the ring, started mocking him, doing the same thing that Ibushi was trying to tell him, come on, let's go, whatever. And then uh, they hit two suplex on Ibushi. High kick by Ibushi. Ibushi kick coming back. Ibushi suplex Jay for the second, from the second rope, from the outside of the ring. He picked him up and threw him over his head and dropped him over his head. Uh, last right power bump for a two count on Jay. He still couldn't pin him. Jay hit uh, uh, three uh, super, uh, suplex. Uh, sleep was it a dragon sleeper suplex? Ibushi landed on his head three times. This was this was crazy. Regal plex for a two count by Jay on Ibushi. Gamagoye for a two count on Jay. That was the second one he hit him. The Phoenix Flash, but the referee got taken out by Ghetto because he had him. And Ghetto goes and throws out red shoes outside. And only for Ghetto to then get Gomaye because he went in the ring with the brass knucks and he got Gomaye. By Ibushi, um, um, Jay hits the Blade Runner. Ibushi gets out on a two count. Ibushi get caught again with the ITO, which is a modified backwards uh, uh, figure four leg lock. Like, like. Uh, Regal Super for another two count. Jay hits the Bloody Sunday. Ibushi comes back, hits him with like a V trigger on Jay. Two more knees. A lariat by the Ibushi. Hit a reverse and a front gamma. Goma, what, Goma Goye to BJY 
it was an unbelievable match. And I'll tell you right now, right now, I've like 34 minutes for those two, um, for those two nights. Uh, I usually don't like staying this long, but guys, if you have not watched Wrestle Kingdom 15, buy it on Fight TV. They got a bundle for $30. I bought the bundle. So I was able, I mean, I was able to watch the, the, um, the first night through a stream and then the second night I was able to see it through Fight TV so you could buy both of them for $30 on Fight TV today there was the New Year's Dash I still haven't watched that so I'm sure and I love watching New Year's Dash because New Year's Dash it starts over the whole storyline um, but the funny and crazy thing is that now it looks like everything is set up Ibushi right now is the IWGP and the Intercontinental World Champion. And his next challenger, the guy who came in after the match, is Sonata. Sonata just beat Evil. So he's went and challenged Ibushi, which will be a great match because these two guys go at it. It's a great, great match. So I don't know what's, you know, uh, when that's going to happen, if it's going to happen in new beginnings. Oh, we don't know. So that's a good way to start uh, the year for New Japan. So a lot of you guys... Uh, they are wrestling fans. If you went and sat down on Monday night to watch three hours of garbage TV, and yes, I'm going to say garbage TV, a legends, so-called legends, because Tori Wilson is not a legend. Alicia Fox is not a legend. So, because they, they, first of all, Tori Wilson never wrestled on no damn, I think she wrestled in WCW, but she never wrestled in, in WWE. So she was never a wrestler. Alicia Fox, please, let's not even go there. You know what I'm saying? She only won the Divas title, and how good was the Divas title back then? So let's be realistic. So if you guys were complaining about that, and complaining was the direction of WWE, I suggest you to start watching New Japan Pro Wrestling because New Japan Pro Wrestling right now is the promotion to watch. Okay, you may not like it because it might not be the style because you don't want there's no promos, there's no backstage stupid shit, none of that stuff. You're not gonna get that. You're gonna get that pro pro wrestling matches the way it's supposed to be and you know AEW um, they should start working with them with New Japan because that's going to help not only AEW but it's also going to help the younger talent to be able to know how it is to go into a a New Japan ring and wrestle all these New Japan wrestlers and Kenny Omega has the key to that and that's the AEW world title and his infinity gauntlet style belt collector they already set up. It could be Omega versus Ibushi in the summer. The Dominion. I'm going to predict that. So, we'll see. But it, Wrestle Kingdom 15 was great. I would advise you guys to watch it. And I would advise you to order it. To keep it. $29 for a bundle. You cannot go wrong. $30. A regular pay-per-view is like $50 for WWE. And most of the time, this pay-per-view is not that great. It's not bad, but it's not great. So, think about it. You paying you paying thirty dollars for two pay per views that probably worth fifty dollars if you watched it both of those night unless you got be, uh, New Japan World. So I got it through Fight TV, so I was good with that. So I'm happy that I got those, and I bought last year's New Japan's both shows. Incredible, they do not disappoint me. New Japan never disappoint me. I don't think I don't remember the last time that New Japan has disappointed me. I don't. They on point with this all the time. So. Again, guys, thank you for supporting the Chokesland Wrestling Report. That is it. This has been a long uh, video. I usually don't do 38 minutes, 40 minutes, but I needed to bring this out because uh, I've been watching the social media and a lot of people are complaining about WWE, this and that. But if, uh, and I, I'm a big advocate of New Japan Pro Wrestling. If you didn't watch this, then you missed out big time. So I would advise you guys to, again, get that through Fight TV. It's worth it. So... Um, again, guys, thank you for uh, supporting the Chokesland Wrestling Report. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. Um, let me know uh, if you have any comments, what you think is going to happen now. Now Ibushi is the new IWGP and Intercontinental Champion. Uh, the Gorillas of Destiny won their seventh uh, IWGP Tag Team Champions. Uh, there's a lot of noise going on in that Bullet Club. Um, do you think if Fatasmo is the one to be Hiromo for the IWGP Junior, tag, uh, junior Title? Uh, and if there is a tag team out there, it'll be uh, Desperado Kanamura for the junior tag team belts. So we'll see. Until then, guys, be safe. Um, again, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, uh, tell a friend, pass it along. 
Um, and I will appreciate it. Until then, guys, be safe. Wear that mask. And it's six feet apart. Social distancing until this is over. Have a good day.